Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. I want to talk about something that seems to be coming up quite a bit over the last few weeks, and it's kind of like a danger zone type of thing. And that is, I've had these business owners that have good, okay running businesses. Sometimes they're definitely not as profitable as they should be, uh, but they're okay. They're they're doing all right. Nothing major, no home runs, nothing like that. Just steady Eddie. And yet during the conversation with the business owner, they usually want to try to do one of two things. The first one is they want to try to expand their business and go into new markets and or they've all of a sudden decided that they're going to go start this whole second business. And I just sit there sometimes and I'm listening to them and their reasoning and everything else. And it's kind of like they're semi bored with their current business, but at the same time as they've gotten all excited about this other business or this other area that they can go service. But here's the thing, and I always feel like I'm such a Debbie Downer when I do this. There is a time and a place for you to expand into new markets, and there's a time and a place for you to be able to say, hey, I can handle two businesses. That time is not when you're just doing okay, Uh, and, and in some cases, losing money or really teetering on barely surviving. Those are the wrong times for you to buy a business. And I'm always amazed at how people think it's going to solve the problem because deep down, what it comes from is they're either, like I said earlier, they're either bored by the business that they currently have or B, it's just the business isn't making the type of money and they think that if they go chase this new shiny object or this new area, that they're going to get more money. And that is so not the case. It's like they've completely forgotten how hard it was to get the first business off the ground. Now, I want to pause for a sec on this because I really think it's important that people need to understand that if your business is not flourishing today, you have no business buying another business, nor do you have any business opening up new markets. You need to get your current business to a state that it runs primarily without you the majority of the time, or at least with minimal needs from you. So for example, if you're doing the vast majority of the work today in your current business, where do you think you're going to find the time to open up a new area and or a new business? Because that's going to take some of your time. And what's going to end up happening is a business that's barely hanging on is going to tank even worse the minute your time is being pulled out to go chase this new shiny object. And what's going to end up happening is you're dooming it. You're better off just saying, look, my goal is to close down this business while I open up another business. And if you're thinking about another area is going to save you, it absolutely is not. You've heard me preach this on this uh, this podcast in the past. There is plenty of business in your own backyard. Most small businesses only tap into about 3%, maybe 5% if they're lucky, of their current market. And there's so much business there, it's just that they're trying to appeal to everybody versus getting laser focus on who their ideal client is. And if they did that, they would be more than able to double the business that they currently have, servicing the area they currently have today. I just really wanna make sure that you hear me when I say, please calm down on these dreams of tackling new areas or starting these new businesses, because Like I said, you don't have the time, the energy, the resources. You're missing so much of what it is that you need to have. I've had this one business, for example, that I was talking to, and they maybe he gets paid as an employee in their business, and the business maybe makes a thousand dollars extra a month. And they're like, oh, yeah, I can just live off of that thousand while I build this other business. And I'm like, you haven't even hired the people that are going to replace you for doing the work in the business that you currently do today. Do you think they're you're just going to hire them off of the streets? And he goes, well, yeah, I'm just going to hire someone and they can start replacing me in that business. And I'm like, you've obviously never tried to relinquish parts of your business to people before you fully trained and developed them. Because what you need to have in place before you do that is you need to have a solid foundation of your current business and you need to have people that can step in and do the stuff that you're currently doing in your current business. Because unless you're only working 20, 25 hours a week in your current business, where do you think you're getting that time? I mentioned that earlier. You know, it takes time to build a business, to flesh it out, to do different things. And for some people, they want to jump in with both feet and create this big vision that they've created for this business, as opposed to just dipping their toe in it and finding out if it's even viable before they end up destroying the current business that they're in. 
listen, I want you to have a very successful business and I want you to be able to chase all the dreams and goals that you have, all those aspirations that are in front of you. However, I want you to do it smartly and I want to make sure that you do it from an intellectual standpoint versus just a passion, a feeling, a gut thing that you've got going on. Or in some cases, it's because someone else has presented to you this great opportunity to go in on something together and you're like, oh, you know, yeah, I've got this business, but Joe over here, he's got this other business and he needs a partner. And I told him that he asked me if I wanted to be part of it. And I said, yeah, I want to be part of it. So I'm going to go do that with Joe. Just remember, you're abandoning your current business. And it's it's just so hard for me because I don't want to be that Debbie Downer. I don't want to be that person that destroys the the dreams that they have. But I also want to be that person who plays devil's advocate and that person who says, hey, look, slow down, Turbo, because it's time that we take a look at this to find out if this is even viable for you. And really, honestly, it just takes a few questions for people to kind of go, yeah, I kind of see how you're right. I can see how that can happen. And yet I can see in their eyes, sometimes they're even though they've intellectually gotten there, they're still going to go to it. Um, I just want you to be successful at whatever business that you're running. And I get the fact that sometimes we start businesses that we are not in love with and that we have kind of lost that, that passion for. All I'm saying is before you go jump off and you do something you're going to regret, have a plan for the current existing business. Are you planning to continue it? If so, who's going to run it? Who's going to be in charge? Who's going to do the day-to-day operations? Before you go off chasing dream number two on something else, are you going to sell it? Are you going to wind it down? Are you okay with it imploding because you think that you can build this other business up? Ask yourself all of the questions that you need to ask and are you financially prepared for that? Because if your business is barely making any money, do you have you been able to build up savings accounts? So this way, if the business does start to backslide, you've got the money to be able to survive. You need to make sure that you're asking yourself all of these different things. Now, I don't want this to be a long episode because it's more of for those of you that need to hear this. If you are getting all excited about going into a new area or starting a completely different business or joining someone else in their business, it's really important that you slow down and ask yourself, how am I going to make this work? Can I run this business and run the other business without working myself to death? Do I need to hire somebody to replace me in my current business before I do that? You need to make sure that you look at it because I'm telling you, it's going to blow up in your face And now you're going to have two businesses that are failing or barely surviving and you're working 80 hours a week trying to make them both work and you're going to become extremely frustrated, extremely burnt out and something's going to have to give. And I don't want that for you. And like I said, this has been coming up quite a bit and I don't know if it's tied into a new year starting. So people are looking at new opportunities in the new year, but whatever it is, you need to slow your roll and you need to make sure that this is absolutely the best thing for you for your family, you can financially do it, and that you have a plan for your current business to ensure that it is creating the money you need, that you are willing to give up the money that you make as an employee in that business as you turn around and you give that money to someone else to to do the things that you're currently doing in it. Because a lot of small business owners forget the fact that that is money that that they were paying themselves and now they're paying someone else and that's going to take a dip in what they take home every single month. So you need to make sure you're looking at all of that, okay? So please, before you do anything rash or anything crazy, before you start a new area, before you go chasing something else, please make sure that the business you have today is running at its max capacity and or you're willing to let it go because that's what's gonna end up happening. I care about you and I only want your success. So just please think it through and you know I got you, okay? I'm here to help you out. But the main thing is I just need you to make smart decisions in your business, ones that make financial sense. And with that, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now. Hey, badass business owner, before you go, as you know, I'm a huge believer in you knowing your business numbers. After all, it isn't about how much you sell. It's about what you keep. And the best way to grow your profits is to start diving in and understanding those business numbers. To help you on this journey, I have created the Know Your Business Numbers course. We will walk through how to read your profit and loss statement. You'll learn the key calculations that'll help ensure that you're making a healthy profit on all of your products or services. 
plus a ton of other good stuff that'll help you learn how to use those business numbers to create even more sales and profits. Just check out the link below in the show notes or visit knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. So if you're ready to increase those profits, it's time you start diving into your business numbers.